hello YouTube viewer and welcome back. Today we're going to be learning in the next few minutes, if I can hit the right button, how to make something like this. Now, you might be thinking, okay, why don't I just, you know, bake it into the texture and save myself some performance. But the thing about this method is that no matter which way you turn it, your snow is always going to be facing up. Or maybe this could be moss or maybe it's sand. And another cool little feature that I'll teach you how to do is um, you can see the, the snow is actually piling on top of the, the mesh. Um, well, it looks like it's piling on top of it. So that's just another little neat trick. So let's get straight into it. All right, we're in the material editor. This is your material. Maybe it's your material for all your props or your rocks or your landscape elements, blah, blah, blah. Um, very basic, just a base color, standard metallic roughness, bloody blahs, and you've got a normal map. Yours might contain more stuff or less stuff, but this is where we're gonna start. So first of all, here's one I prepared earlier. This is sort of a, a finished product. First thing we're going to do is we're going to explore what these nodes do. The vertex normal world space and the pixel normal world space. And by masking them in the B channel, uh, we're going to get the value that is facing upwards. So B is the Z axis, um, which in Unreal is up and down. And positive B is going to be up. So we don't have to do anything after that. So if I just grab this and chuck it into the base color, then you're going to notice that the outputted texture is every pixel that is facing upwards. So you can see even on the sides of the, the mesh, we're getting pixels that are facing upwards. Um, this is after the normal map has sort of been rendered. Now this time we're going to look at what the vertex normal does. So as you've probably guessed, this is going to give us the upwards facing faces according to just the vertices of the mesh. If I go to brush wireframe for a sec, this face here is facing straight up. And if I go back into lit mode, you'll see that it is white. And you can see that the sides are dark. They're not, they're not white. So what we're going to do is you're going to add these together. Now we're going to start with the number two. So number two on top of this subtract. Uh, and then we're gonna subtract from two the vertex color. Um, this is so that you can paint parts of your mesh that you just don't want affected. You know, maybe they're undercover or something. So you can manually paint out, uh, you know, where you want snow coverage to be or to not be, sorry. And then you're gonna multiply that by a parameter. And this is our snow coverage multiplier. So this is the amount of snow that we have on top of the mesh. And then we are gonna subtract the output of that from pixel and vertex world space together. So on this top lane here, you're going to multiply it by a hardness value. So this is sort of like the the contrast of the snow itself. I'll show you at the end what, what all of these do. We're gonna saturate that for safety's sake. <laughs> Don't wanna to go too far. So this is what is gonna determine the color of the snow. Um, so basically what we're going to do, you're going to get your base color and whatever color you want the snow to be, or maybe it's a secondary texture and you're going to lerp A and B and the alpha is going to be this output. I always put things like this into a switch so you can just turn it off for materials that you don't want it on. Um, so if I plug this into base color, this is what we're left with. Um, the snow coverage multiplier will determine how much snow is on top of it. Um, it will start to sort of creep around the sides, you know, the further up it goes until it's absolutely fully covered. So this is just affecting the, the color or the texture of the object. Um, and as you can see, as I turn it on its side, the snow always stays facing up. This is super, super handy for, you know, level design. Um, you might be just making a, a cliff face or something. And as you start, creating your cliffs and stuff, the, the snow is always facing upwards. You don't have to worry about, you know, baked textures looking really, really wonky. And then the other thing is the snow hardness value. I've got mine set to five, um, but as we move that down, you can see, sorry, I'll wait for this cloud to move. Stupid clouds. Come on clouds. Get out the way. <laughs> 
So this affects the, the hardness of the snow. So as you can see, when it's low, the snow is very, very soft. And as I move it up, it becomes harder and harder uh, until it's, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit too hard. I leave mine at five. That's up to, to personal preference. Now, the second part of this effect is going to be this bottom lane down here. So what we're going to do is the output of this little section here, we are going to subtract from the vertex normal world space in the B channel. Plug that in, saturate it. Then we're going to put it into a multiply and in a parameter here, this is going to be our snow height. So this is how high we want the snow to pile on top of the material. Now, the reason that we've done this, subtract from two and this and et cetera, et cetera, is so that this doesn't actually start happening until the snow coverage passes one. And it also sort of allows you to make a thin coating of snow or moss before it starts to actually pile up, which I find very handy in some cases. So you're gonna multiply this by your snow height parameter. Uh, then we're gonna plug it into a float three in the Z axis. So this is going to turn it into a, a three vector with zero, zero, and then our value in the Z. Um, and we're going to put it through a switch again. So, you know, so you can turn it off per material. And we're just going to go and plug that into the world position offset. Sweet. Let's jump back in. And this time we'll play around with the snow height value. So you can see uh, this is it at zero. So you can see at zero, it's literally just the, the color that's changing. But as we put the height up, maybe to, let's go to like 50 or something, something a bit drastic. Um, as we turn this up, you can see that it, it sort of makes it look like the snow or the sand or the moss is piling on top of the, um, on top of the mesh which is really, really cool. Another thing that you can add to this is you can lerp between two normal maps. So I've set up a normal map for the snow itself. I'm getting absolute world position, masked in the X and Y channel, divided by 200. So this is going to be top down projected onto the mesh. That's going into the B of the lerp. Our original normal map is going to the A of the lerp. And we're going to grab a value from here, from this node right here. We're going to put that in the alpha. Now, the reason we're using this one and not that one is because you can't actually use something that's being affected by a pixel normal world space for a normal map because a normal map actually uses this in its sort of calculation, I guess. Um, so it would create like a feedback loop and it would blow your computer up. You don't want to do it. So we're going to get the one that's only using the vertex normal, the same one that we're using to alter the height of the snow. We bring that down, we put into the lerp, we hit save, we minimize the window. As you can see, as I put the snow coverage up, the snow gets, you know, turned into snowy snow. Um, a different normal map, basically. It lerps between them. So you can see snow just covering the rocks, and then as I move it up, it turns into our snow normal map. Very, very cool. Now, if you want this to happen a bit earlier, what you can do is just add, you know, a little offset here. So I could go um, 0 0.3 and then make sure you saturate that afterwards because an alpha should always be zero to one. I tend not to use lerps to extrapolate values. You just want them to, you know, do their thing. You can see that the the snow normal appears earlier. So on a basic level, that's, that's it. You know, that's it, it's done. You can do it, you can use that for whatever you like. Um, if you've looked at my landscape communication tutorial, which you should definitely check out, I'm able to apply this effect in specific areas. So you can see as I move this through there and then into the snow, you know, it gets covered automatically. The rocks gradually get more, more snow covered as they enter the, uh, the snowy biome. And it also makes level design so much easier. So just as a little bit of homework for you guys, um, basically what I'm doing is taking my my sand, desert, and my snowy snowland uh, samples from my landscape. And then I'm multiplying the snowy area by negative one. So this is taking everything that is one or white in the mask and putting that into negative one. 
And then I'm adding them together. So now I have a, a mask that goes from negative one up to one. Then I divide it by two, which brings them to positive 0.5 and negative 0.5. And then I add 0.5, which brings it into a value of zero to one. And we fit two samples in there with a middle ground. And then I plug that into the specular channel of my runtime virtual texture. Now that might seem a bit stupid. Why am I putting it in the specular? Um, but if you watch my other video, you'll understand that, you know, this and this are just scalar textures. Um, black and white textures. It doesn't matter what you use them for. I'm basically just hijacking them for my own my own purposes. So then on the other side of that, if I go into my props master material, we've got our runtime virtual texture sample and out of the specular channel, which is what we're using for these things, um, I can unpack it. So by subtracting 0.5, we bring it back to negative 0.5 to 0.5 values. Then we multiply it by two. And then we, then we use an absolute value node. So both the negative one and the positive one are positive one. So then we multiply our snow coverage multiplier, which you know, you've got set up already by that value. So this only applies in an area that's been painted with sand or snow. And then coming out into the color lerp, um, I do some contrast. So 0.5 is going to be our no color change, you know, standard color. So um, the other things, the, the snow and the sand, I want to be, I don't want them to sort of fade in. I want them to sort of build up more. So that's why I've got this contrast node here. Uh, then I'm just using a three color lerp. So that means this is zero. This is... 0.5 and this is one which is really handy because that's sort of what we've packed this into be so up the top in the in the zero that's where we've got our snow color then at the bottom in the c that's where we've got our sand color and then going into the b is just our our normal you know texture for whatever object that we want so that decides what color it's going to use and then over here this is what actually paints it onto the top of the um, of the mesh um, and that just gets plugged into the base color and with all that said and done this is what we end up with by adding this this little extra layer of complexity it looks awesome <laughs> I love it magnifique as they would say all right so drawbacks let's let's look at drawbacks so one thing that I've noticed if you have any surfaces that are that have sort of sharp corners that are facing up so what tends to happen is as i increase the snow coverage they actually detach from the mesh now i'm not sure if there's a workaround for this i think it's just an inherent property of the way that um you know vertex normals work in 3d modeling programs and stuff like that uh, you might be able to get around it by using tessellation but i honestly wouldn't uh, recommend it because tessellation can get a little bit hefty when you've got too many things using it. So th the workaround for that is you could have a switch in your material that just disables the vertex displacement for, you know, certain things. So if you were going to add a switch, uh, it would be here, right here. And this would just be called use vertex displacement and we're going to set that to true by default just so i don't break my existing materials <laughs> all right so you can see we're back with our material that was giving us a bit of trouble if i just click this box or sorry uncheck this box it'll compile real quick and now it isn't using the vertex displacement and i can fully cover it with snow and it looks beautiful once again so that's about it from me today. Um, I hope you found this educational and entertaining. If you're struggling with anything Unreal Engine or game development or material related, um, you can join our Discord server, which is down below in the goobly doobly. The Discord server is filled with some very lovely people. A lot of people in there actually make tutorials themselves and are very knowledgeable about blueprints, materials, C++, um, the, the whole shebanga bang. You know, if you've got any questions or you want to share some knowledge or you just sort of don't know what you're doing or where to look, you know, if you want to achieve something but you're not sure where to start, our Discord server is the perfect place to ask any questions like that. 
And as our goal is to spread knowledge as far as it can go, it would be very, very appreciated if you could uh, like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help with the, you know, YouTube algorithm and the bloody, bloody, blah. blah, blah. You've, you've heard it a hundred times before, so I won't repeat it. So I think that's going to be all from me this fine summer's evening. And with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.